Hey, what's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earth Master back here on this end of the weekend. It is Sunday, July 16th, 2023, about 10.48 a.m. here at California time, uh, where it's going to be another hot day. Uh, latest activity looks like a 2.9 in or a 2.4, excuse me, and a 2.9. So 2.4, the big island of Hawaii. Now, we did see some large earthquake activity overnight up into the Aleutian Trench of Alaska uh, that triggered a tsunami advisor, advisory. <coughs> excuse me. Not for sure if we ever had a tsunami or not uh, there, far as this 7.2 goes. Now, there was a little bit of a magnitude downgrade, it looks like. It originally came in as a 7.4, and I believe the EMSC model is still showing that earthquake as a 7.4, but the USGS dropped that a little bit. Either way, a large earthquake, and it is in a zone that does see quite a bit of large-scale earthquake activity. In fact, this region here, just to the east, along the Aleutian Trench here, maybe possibly in the same spot, seen an 8-pointer uh, just a couple years back, but it just goes to show you that it doesn't take a whole lot of time far as the accumulated slip rate goes to produce a large earthquake. Uh, roughly around 60 mm per year on average and of course it goes uh the further west you go along the Aleutian trench shows that it's uh, a little bit higher in the slip rate a lot of large scale activity here historically but the 7.2 came after a period a period of uh, fairly quiet conditions here for the past couple days uh, i was pretty much calling the calm before the storm uh, just yesterday in my update video. So now we, we have seen quite a bit of uh, aftershock activity following this 7.2. Uh, looks like at least uh, we got about at least 17 or so with the largest magnitude aftershock wise. Uh, comes moments later with a 5.7 roughly within that same spot. Uh, although it looks like it's a little bit deeper than the main quake there. The main quake 32 kilometers deep. Uh, the aftershock down there a little bit further uh, at 49 kilometers deep there so gonna watch that uh area across the alaska region uh let's check out the tsunami warning center there from last night's messages here it's kind of late about one o'clock or so in the morning about 12 something when this came in but i didn't get to it until i uh, got home a little bit later uh, let's see here hopefully this will key up that's the PNSN network. U.S. Tsunami Warning Center. There we go. So this is from yesterday, that 7.2. See the downgrade here? Uh, looks like originally came in as 7.3. Upgrade to 7.4, then a downgrade to 7.2. Now, there was, a, there was a little advisory that got put out. Uh, with it looks like a little bit of tsunami activity around the King Cove and the Sand Point, Alaska area. Very small though, 0 0.5. We're talking about half a foot uh, observed maximum tsunami height. But it looks like at least uh, it definitely did produce one, a small one though. Uh, and that was very localized to the area around Alaska. But uh, I think we all know that this area can see some large quakes and produce some damaging tsunamis Pacific wide. Uh, if you get that magnitude large enough and the correct uh, mechanisms going on here, as far as the earthquake activity goes, we can definitely see a large Pacific wide tsunami uh, we have in the past. So we'll just continue to keep an eye on that area. Uh, also a little uptick here across the northwestern corner of the Pacific Ring of Fire and the Marian or the uh, Izu Trench area. Looks like things down south here have uh, mellowed out. Let's see what we got for the uh, New Zealand area. It was kind of kicking up here yesterday in terms of earthquake activity. Seen some threes and fours. Today it looks a little bit quieter. Let me double check here the New Zealand um, website. It's going to be GeoNet. Looks like four hours ago did see a 3.9. Um... 4.0 there from yesterday as well. Definitely did see a noticeable uptick here across the area. That's for sure. That was about the only active spot yesterday until, uh, well, until that big one last night there in Alaska. 
look at the seismic drums. There's the, uh, that's going to be that four-pointer there around North Island a few hours back. Uh, but for the most part, it uh, looks like we're mellowing out slightly in terms of earthquake activity down there. Most of the movement, momentum, looks like it's over here, Western Pacific Ring of Fire and the northern edge here. As uh, far as the west coast, what do we got going on out here? Uh, just outside of Benton City, across the Horse Heaven Hills. Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Horse Heaven. All right, uh, 2.3 and a 0.3. Those two earthquakes from today. A little bit of activity up north of Seattle as well. Uh, west coast, California-wise, got one earthquake here. Uh, east, northeast of Willows, 2.6. Shows a shallow earthquake. We have seen earthquake activity out here before, uh, just west of the Sacramento River. Um, further down south, well, at least over here around Reno, there's a couple smaller earthquakes and some out around the uh, Tonopah, Nevada area. Not seeing any major swarms out here across the Southern California area for now. Doesn't look like any of this activity has adjusted uh, across Southern Cal, although south of the border we got a couple smaller earthquakes here uh, that stirred up following that uh, movement last night looks like a 4.2 and a couple other threes in there as well uh, again no major adjustment though around the southern end of the san andreas fault out in texas and oklahoma area uh, looking somewhat active as well uh, a little earthquake activity here around the rockies 2.5 well west of denver uh, Yellowstone National Park. We'll double check that here real quick and see what's going on. Uh, there's that seven pointer signature from last night, the 7.2 up there in Alaska. We've got some P waves and let's go back here a little bit. P waves and some S waves traveling there following that large scale earthquake, uh, but doesn't look like it stirred up anything there at Yellowstone. Things look pretty calm there for the. Uh, for the most part, as far as earthquake activity goes. Uh, back over here around the New Madrid zone, a couple earthquakes there. One from yesterday, one from today. A 2.4 and a 1.6. Uh, down into the Mexico area, a little bit of adjustment going on here at the northern end of the Middle America Trench and just offshore. Seen a 4.4 from yesterday. Uh, looks like a 5.1 early this morning. And um, another earthquake there from yesterday, 4.2. Puerto Rico Trench, not quite as active as what we've seen over the past week or so, but still fairly um, active regionally here across the Puerto Rico mainland area. A couple twos and some threes. South America, let's see, we've got one earthquake in the last hour, it looks like, underneath Argentina, 4.4. That's 213 kilometers deep. Uh, a look at the EMSC globe. Looks like some smaller threes and twos out here in the mix. Same with down here across the, uh, looks like the Costa Rica area. Let's look at the activity here around the Izu Trench. This is the other area that I'm kind of concerned about seeing a large earthquake uh, potential. Of course, the Kuril Kamachaka up here is a, uh, a primed area for some earthquake activity. This one from yesterday. And uh, most of this activity looks like from yesterday there along the trench. A mixed bag of uh, new and older earthquakes here across the Izu Trench. The latest though, uh, let's see, the latest looks like it's going to be this 4.2, pretty deep, 361 kilometers uh, earlier this morning, but after that seven pointer there in Alaska. So it looks like it's still trying to put the squeeze over here across the Japan Trench and the Kuro Kamachaka Trench. We'll watch that for some movement. Uh, 5.1 Papua New Guinea. Just uh, earlier this morning, 136 kilometers deep. A little bit of activity across the Indonesia Islands area as well. Uh, rest of the world, fairly minimal. Typical movement here across the Mediterranean. I got a little bit of activity way up north of Iceland with a 4.6. That's going to be way up here into the uh, Greenland Sea. That uh, activity earlier this morning. So some newer activity taking place up here across the uh, mentioned plate boundary. 
Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on. So we'll continue to watch this area for some aftershock activity. And again, this movement uh, up there in Alaska can get rather large. Uh, let's see where the felt reports were at. Click on this here. Looks like some, some shaking going on there. Uh, let's read the uh, tectonic summary from the USGS. Uh, 7.2 earthquake south of Sandpoint, Alaska occurred as a result of a thrust faulting on or near the subduction zone interface between the Pacific and the North American plates. Major subduction zone there. The uh, preliminary focal mechanism solution indicates rupture occurred on a fault dipping either shallowly to the shallow, shallowly <laughs> to the northwest or steeply to the southeast. Uh, looks like this is all consistent with slip occurring on the subduction zone between the two plates. Um, let's see, 70 mm per year within within this area, subducting at the Alaska Aleutian Trench, 125 kilometers to the southeast of the earthquake so there's your slip rate as mentioned here average uh like i say as we go along further to the west it increases about 71 over here but either way it's it's definitely a high slip rate that's why we see some large earthquakes there on regular occasion uh let's see back in um back in 1946 there was an m 8.6 uh, which occurred within 250 kilometers of this event last night, a 7.2. Uh, of course, you know, that does produce some large damaging tsunamis. Uh, the Alaska Aleutian Trench, of course, we've read about this in school. The M9.2 that occurred back in 1964 in the Prince William Sound region of Alaska uh, was the uh, largest um, earthquake for that area. And of course, a subsequent tsunami too. So we'll just, you know, keep an eye on that. I don't know if we're primed for an eight or not up here along the Aleutian Islands area, Aleutian Trench, but uh, we'll definitely watch that. Um, yeah. Let's see what else we got here across the uh, earthquake world. Hawaii got one earthquake out here, it looks like, in the last hour, 2.4. Doesn't look like any of this adjustment last night uh, affected the Hawaii area. A lot of times we get uh, a whole bunch of shifting going on here across the Pacific Plate that does affect areas there <clears throat> around the Big Island, but doesn't look like uh, that was the case for now. Uh, space weather events. Let's go ahead and see what's going on here. We're just covering, we're just coming down from an M flare, pretty large M flare. Looks like an M uh, four pointer or so. Uh, July 16th, that was put out, looks like, earlier today. I'm trying to figure out where this uh, m flare came from. Channel is not optimal. I don't know what's going on with this here. Certificate date invalid. All right, well, I'm not going to worry about that for now. I don't know what's going on with it. And I hardly ever get a, uh, a notification like that on that page. So it's a little odd. Same for that one. Kind of weird. Uh, either way imagery here from last night i believe this is last night's imagery shows a couple different uh, sunspot regions that we're watching getting numerous coming around the eastern limb here um yeah i don't know why it's doing that not for sure kind of odd Hmm. 
Alrighty, well, we'll have to check back on that a little bit later tonight here, but uh, we're definitely seeing some flaring activity as noted here. We'll continue to watch that. Looks like 99% chance for C flare. M flare at 40, X flare potential around 10% chance with uh, some proton event possible uh, today as well from all the uh, sunspots. Um, looks like a potential solar storm here around the 18th. 50% chance here at the higher latitudes. We'll check back on that. Uh, probably tomorrow see uh, how it looks then storm prediction center shows uh, not a whole lot of severe weather out here today just a slight risk uh, for some wind and some hail out here across portions of Kansas now I know this area definitely needs some rain and they're getting it which is good news um, out here in California we're expecting uh, some thunderstorms possible now this here is not your typical thunderstorm activity that you see over here across the plains and midwest or anywhere else for that matter this is a going to be a dry lightning event uh, potentially here across northern california which is not good because i could definitely stir up some wildfires things are drying up in the mountains there's quite a bit of vegetation up there due to the uh you know the extensive precipitation that we've used or received throughout the winter uh, so keeping an eye on this this will be a little bit later tonight when this stirs up uh, but in the meantime we're supposed to top out at 100 and i think 112 today here outside where i live in chico it's already 100 degrees out and it's just barely noon and uh, we're still underneath the influence here of some humidity and the uh, dew points that are a little bit higher as well making it feel warmer i shouldn't say warmer it's hotter than uh, what it feels like warm would be nice uh, but today is going to be another super hot day. Either way, you're going to watch this here. Um, could spell some trouble later for starting some fires out there in the uh, in the mountains. All right, uh, let's see what else is there. I think that's about it, folks. Um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, the rest of your weekend here. And uh, we'll just stay safe out there. Still think we need to watch this area specifically for some larger scale movement with adjustment now north uh you know the general plate activity here obviously is a subduction zone but we're getting activity here across the Aleutian trench further activity over here along the philippine uh, filipino plate um we did see some activity here yesterday but i think it's i think it's building uh for strong potential across the kurokam chaka it's definitely primed in my book i believe that's very primed it's been a while since we've seen any major scale activity here all right i'm gonna jump off here have a good day um we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on tonight take care folks